Hi, this is Frank Donald from Gadgetronics.com. In this video, we are going to see the building and testing of your RF remote control using HD decoder and encoder chips and 433 MHz transceivers. HD12D and HD12E are pretty famous decoder and encoder chips. They are widely used in RF communication purposes. So I have got the ready-made RF transmitter and receiver board which I bought online. This board has HD12E at its core for encoding purposes, 8 DIP switch buttons for setting the address of encoder. At the corner, you will see TX module in this board and a headers for obtaining the output. On the other hand, we have got RF receiver board which has HD12D at its core, 4 LEDs to indicate the reception of data at the output. RF receiver goes here. So these are the boards which can, which I am going to use for building RF remote control. You will find plenty of these online, so there won't be much of a problem in finding them. I would suggest you to go through some basics of HD12E and HD12D in the links given below, or this tutorial might be a bit confusing for you to understand. Building RF remote using these boards are not straightforward. You will have three problems if you attempt to build an RF link directly using these boards. I am going to try to demonstrate these problems and show problem 1 active and power down. I have wired my boards to the power source. We got the receiver in the left and transmitter in the right. Let's look into the demonstration of this problem. Let me switch on the receiver now. Now you can see as soon as the receiver is turned on all the LEDs light up. This shows that the output data pins of decoder are active now. But if you take a closer look, you can see our transmitter section is not even turned on. This problem exhibits due to the active power on characteristics of H2 HT12D decoder in the receiver part. This means whenever this chip is turned on, it will be active even before any signal is transmitted from the transmitter. This case is totally undesirable when building a remote control because you always want your end device to get activated once you give any input from the transmitter end. To explain it better, consider building a toy car using this board directly. This will make the car to run wild as soon as you plug in the battery without any input signal from the transmitter. Ultimately, the car will end up crashing somewhere and you don't want that to happen. Problem 2. Unstable VT signal. VT signal output from HT12D is momentary and indicates valid transmission. But VT signal is highly unstable and cannot be used directly. To demonstrate this, I have wired an LED to VT pin to show how unstable the signal is. Here is the LED and resistor connected to the VT pin. Let me quickly turn on the whole setup now. Now after power down, you can see the LED starts blinking at irregular intervals. This shows how unstable VT signal is. In fact, the switching speed will be very high and you will find faster switching between on and off state if you observe it with a logic analyzer or with an os oscilloscope. There goes the problem too. Problem 3. Latched HT12D output. The output of HT12D is latched and not momentary. You may not face much problem when using button to feed input, but when using another signal source, output data might get latched or remain stable unless another pulse is fed in the input. This will face and this will have some consequences if you want to uh, embed this board to a microcontroller or some other logic controller. Now let's take a look at the solution for these problems. This build circuit consists of RC power on circuitry, re-triggerable A-stable multi operator and a SR latch using NOT case. The circle part is the power on reset RC arrangement which generates the reset pulse to resolve the first problem active which when powered on we saw earlier. Next comes the re-triggerable multi operator which is meant to stabilize the VT signal from the decoder. 
last comes the SR latch using NOR grips which is used to take in the power and reset pulse and reset the decoder accordingly. And it also provides moment relief function to this remote RF remote control. Next comes the LED indicator which I have added to, uh, as an indication for this uh, control functionality. Explaining the whole working setup by step by step is not within the scope of this video. If you need any further explanation of this control circuit, refer the link provided in the below description. I have wired up the control circuit with the receiver. Now it is wired up. You can now ignore the debugging LEDs in the receiver board. Insert LED in the control circuit will indicate if any data is received from the transmitter. Now we need to test this whole unit and see that control circuit expansion has resolved the problem which I have stated earlier in this video. The control circuit LED right here will act as an indicator for the output obtained from the decoder. I am not sure whether you guys are able to see it clearly in this video. Let us turn this RF unit on now. Now the receiver is turned on, you can ignore these debugging LEDs since it was connected to the board without the control circuit. Also, I hope you can see that the control circuit LED is an off state which shows active power on the problem is resolved now. Let's try turning transmitter on now. Basically, we need to check whether each button press is creating momentary blink in this LED. And there it is. Our control circuit keeps output momentary and stable. Also, eliminates the anonymous turn on of the end device. And that's it. There you go. RF remote control is finally ready. I've designed the PCBs of transmitter part and receiver part along with the control circuitry. Follow the link given in the below description to download the design files. I hope this video would have been of great use to you. Do share your feedback in the comment box below and don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Thank you for watching guys. See you next time.